now I'm recording. Oh, so now I'm you're recording. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. So we're recording now. The guest is Lydia Christensen. And uh, like and subscribe, please. And Lydia and I were just talking. Um, and uh, so you mentioned that you like podcasts. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's I amazing. I love, yeah. love podcasts. So... It, it was a huge honor to be invited. I was super excited. What kind of podcast do you like to listen to? Um, I listen to, well, I love true crime. I'm uh -huh. a big true crime fanatic. Really? Huge. Yeah. So I, I always in, endeavor into that. But um, also just kind of like pop drama mm -hmm. or pop culture drama. You know, yeah. like the typical uh, YouTube, I don't know, the <laughs> typical stuff yeah. people my age watch. I don't know. But yeah. also, I guess maybe not. Yeah. A lot of shows like... Um, uh, the canceled podcast or uh -huh. Trisha Paytas has, you know, these uh -huh. celebrities and influencers started podcasts. So I kind of sure. follow along on their lives on those. And Very cool. Yeah. You know, there's so many podcasts out there. Oh my gosh. I know and you just, you get overwhelmed. Yeah. Cause every, cause like every time you talk to somebody that listens to podcasts, they're like, Hey, we got to listen to this one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Do you like, you like true crime? Okay. Yeah. I'll listen to that one. Yeah. And, you know, yep. and, um, there's so many different subjects. I think that's one of the cool things about it. The medium is that like you can really get you can get really specific about your interests, yeah. and there's gonna be a podcast that covers it. Yep. You know? Yep. But yeah, I definitely agree. Oh, and I also, of course, listen to a lot of music podcasts. I oh, guess you do. I should, <laughs> should uh, clarify on that too. Uh -huh. You know, you always learn something new, and the, yeah. and I and I. Um, when I'm kind of in the mood to just zone out, I'll watch kind of my influencery mm -hmm. people that just talk about their lives but when i'm trying to learn something or at work i typically listen to either like you know a true crime or mm -hmm. or some music podcasts and learn some new things what do you like listening to like when you're driving oh um usually i just throw on spotify mm -hmm. and well actually to be honest it depends day to day yeah I either go i'm in a music mood or i'm or i'm listening to someone talk and most of the time it is actually listening to someone talk because believe it or not i i I do get burnt out of like listening to many different things, but I still, I mean, you know, love mm -hmm. music, but I love yeah, podcasts. Do you ever stuff. find, like, I found this to be true for myself that like listening to so many podcasts, you are like, I find myself forgetting to listen to music and I'm like, what yep. am I doing? That like, is exactly, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but I always feel like sometimes like if you're driving, especially on long trips and stuff like that, you get kind of the the podcast start to drone on like maybe this uh -huh. one is doing and then you but you change it to like music yeah and you can sing along and it keeps you awake yeah I totally agree <laughs> I totally agree and I think that it depends on the mood that you want to be in too yeah. if you're if you're kind of in like um I don't know just a zen mood you might not want to jam out to some rock and roll but right yeah I definitely agree sometimes you just have to get on and put music on and, and zone out onto that. And I want to talk about your influences. So maybe this is sort oh, of a, sure. a decent segue here. So what kind of music do you like to listen to? Let's say if you want to get energized. Sure, sure. Um, oh, boy. Because your cause your is... style, I'll say, because I, you know, I I went to your show at the Armory, which okay. was amazing, yeah, and so um, really really enjoyed that. And but what one of the things I I really liked about you is that. You seem comfortable in a lot of different uh, genres. Yeah, you know, like you can sing country, you can definitely sing rock and roll. You've, I mean, there's the blues. You yeah. can do that. Yeah. Like I even kind of like got a sense of like maybe even almost like an Amy Winehouse kind of feel yeah. on some of your I, stuff. You know, so it's like you're very versatile. I I definitely agree. Which to a point actually. It's frustrating in a way because I can't figure out what is my sound. Yeah. You know, like what genre do I fall under? Mm -hmm. um, we're recording my album right now and I'm kind of like, okay, when we're ready to push this out, where do it doesn't necessarily fall under country radio. Yeah. It doesn't fall under, you know, rock and roll. Yeah. Uh, and it's not a, you know, typical blues sound either. Right. So it's kind of a, it's a morph and I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah. Um, like what is my sound? To go back earlier, though, um, some of my influences are definitely Amy Winehouse. Uh -huh. um, I I love the everything about her. I mean, yeah. the way that she um, sang is there's nobody that amazing. Has, yeah, voice. there's no recreating like who Amy Winehouse was. 
and her as a person obviously highs and lows and yeah you know and, and uh, dark yeah yeah and that's that's something I don't necessarily like mm-hmm. um, want to look up no to in please that, don't but, but we want the, we want you, know, you here the, with us yeah <laughs> yeah the you know her voice and and her yeah. lyrics and stuff are very very you know cool like especially for her time like it was well amazing yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. she's just one of those just you know people that will never like you said she's totally original exactly which is you amazing can't, you can't there's never going to be another amy the I other think thing it, oh, i really ahead. liked about her oh, i'm sorry no go no, ahead no, no. You, you, <laughs> you go i was it. gonna say i was gonna say that um uh amy winehouse another thing that was really cool about her is that she also wrote her own songs yeah and her lyrics were also, um, you know, right there with it. Yeah, yeah. And so she was an amazing singer-songwriter, too. Crazy. And another person that I really look up to is Janis Joplin. Because uh-huh. she and I, you know, I'm, I'm a little sick right now. Yeah. But um, we definitely have that rasp. Have you ever opened that... it up and tried to? Oh, yeah. yeah. And I've actually, like, totally blown my voice on her I was songs gonna say, in the past. Uh-huh. Because it's so easy to get into her, her songs and just yeah. let loose. And, right. And, and try to hit the notes that she just just hit without trying. You extreme know, extreme though, so, right? She yeah. had an extreme oh my sound. Gosh. Yeah. She's crazy good. So I, I think that I look um, when as I'm writing, as I'm you know um, trying to produce the sound in my head to get to the band to say you know this is what I want this to be like. There's some inspiration that I've heavily taken from her on a few of my songs that are yeah. like I I want that rasp and that just ability to go all over the place yeah. you know so when you've got that sort of natural kind of smoky raspy voice yeah you know but to really let loose with the power is mm-hmm. a, it's a dangerous thing right yeah you definitely have to be careful on um <laughs> and that's something in the last year i've learned is control of my uh-huh. um control of my voice because it is such a special very very um, sacred tool that you can easily hurt, you know, and, right. and it takes a long time to get back the... You've injured your vocal cords? Oh my gosh. Well, I didn't always, you know, live the life of uh-huh. pristine. Uh-huh. I didn't know I was going to be in music. I didn't know any of this, right. you know, I just, so I was a heavy smoker and, uh-huh. you know, uh-huh. all of this and that. Yeah. And that definitely didn't help but right. i think that it helped me get the rasp which i like I but at Joplin, the same time, she was probably a smoker oh my gosh, right? yeah, yeah but and definitely amy winehouse yeah was. definitely right but um, i'm not encouraging you to smoke no no and i i don't encourage anyone <laughs> else to smoke either i don't think that it's yeah. it's cool or, right. or anything no. by any means but um that caused me to have really weak vocal cords for a long time okay i mean i had i had laryngitis from like june of of 22 all the way to like September of 22 that whole summer and that's when it's humid and nice out I should have had like fantastic vocals but I wasn't taking care of myself at all Mm. so once I kind of figured that out then I was like oh well if I you know drink the water do the exercises all this stuff now I'm able to go into these Amy Winehouse Mm -hmm. and Janis Joplin notes that you know and hit them with ease or easier yeah then you know, when I wasn't caring, because it, it's a, it's a, yeah. it's a sport in a way, so you, you know, tra- you got to train. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think it, it, it helps anybody to exercise, even just from a, from the attitude perspective, yeah. like in the morning, you know, you get up, you know, you're, yeah. don't have a hangover or whatever, yeah. you know, and yeah. you're, you're ready to attack. Right? Yeah. I, what, what kind of exercise routine do you do? Oh, just, I mean, I do, honestly, I go to YouTube uh-huh. and I hit, I type in vocal exercise warm-ups yeah. or whatever and i'll go through a 10 yeah. to 25 minutes oh so you, of, you mean like a vocal exercise but oh, i mean like yeah. i'm talking physical exercise no. you, do, you know <laughs> you just do, you do the vocal exercises that's enough that's, okay that's what I call. <laughs> but let me tell you what after that show at the armory i learned that i'm gonna have to um start running again or something because actually during covid i mean i was that's what i love doing was exercising running yeah all of that so, um, have you ever tried to run a marathon or anything? No, like yeah. but I should have back when I was actually in shape because now I couldn't even try if I wanted to, but uh-huh. well, at you the, could. At, maybe if there was a bear behind me chasing me now at the armory, I was dancing, moving, yeah. grooving, and I was out of breath. I mean, yeah. I, I was like trying to catch my breath, speak at the same time. Yeah. And I talked to the, 
um, the lady who runs the musicals, um, Julie Julie Chenis, mm-hmm. and um, I'm involved in that too. By the way, you know? really, yeah, I'm on the board of that. It's a, it's the Northern Light Opera Company. Okay, you, you should try out for the show this year because they're because they're singing uh, they're doing uh, Chicago. I used to and, be a theater girl. Like like yeah. Julie was my director when I was younger. Right. I don't have the time anymore. Put like the plug in, you should definitely do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe. If I if I if I if, uh-huh. I if I had the weekends off and uh-huh. I could schedule it around, I'd I'd do it because I love yeah. I love theater. Like I actually enjoy acting and mm-hmm. and pretty much anything to do with stages and cameras and being in front of people. That's yeah. kind of my uh, favorite thing. So Tryouts really, are coming up. So um, even if I was just a, I think you'd be in the course. Yeah, yeah. or yeah, you could, just, be, you could be the lead. No, I, mean, I don't think I, I I don't make these decisions, so I don't know. I'm just encouraging you. Hey, you guys hear that? He's yeah. telling me. <laughs> um, so wait, you were talking to Julie, and what was she saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. She mm-hmm. said, you know, you, you're going to have to start exercising, and, and this is a serious, yeah. you know, like um, workout that you're doing on stage. So Absolutely. you do have to prep for it. Yeah. So we kind of laughed, and I said, oh, my, before the next, before the next you know, show kind of that we do like that, I'm definitely going to be doing some jumping jacks and get myself yeah. prepped <laughs> yeah get, do a little cardio and everything mm-hmm. um so like i was thinking about just like what you're doing and how cool it is that you're you know a singer and you're you know you're trying to make it recording albums playing yeah. shows getting you know bigger and bigger shows and everything like that and i thought i just thought of a few sort of like traits or adjectives or things like that that i thought would apply to somebody who wanted to do that but one of them that just came to mind now was courage because oh for sure i mean to be the center of attention like that um you know not only to 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 do the show but also also just kind of putting yourself out there for all the marketing and yeah and everything else and then you know getting there and then just looking out in the audience and saying all these people are here to see me you know what goes through your mind i mean do you are you nervous when you get up there at all or how do you how do you deal with that from just a a mindset sure that's that's actually such a good question because um i have severe anxiety believe it or not like i actually am a super anxious person i you know overthink everything when I first got on stage with my dad and my brothers in 2019, I would throw up before every gig. I mean, I was so anxious. Mm-hmm. And then um, it slowly just kind of got better. I mean, I just yeah. started playing every weekend and you just get used to it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But then this was my first original show yeah. at the Armory. So it was like a totally different feeling because I'm I'm kind of thinking like, this is this is the stuff I've written. This is you know my music. I'm not yeah. just singing covers of right. you know people that anybody will well, you, enjoy. This is stuff that nobody knows. You right, know, so right. um, it was vulnerable. It was it was the most vulnerable thing I think I've ever done, um, which is crazy because I'm very open. So uh, mm-hmm. pretty much I'm an open book about my story, my life, anything. Um, and that was, that was the most vulnerable thing I'd done was let people know, like the inner workings of my mind in a way, yeah. but, um, I was a little nervous backstage. Um, I got up there and it was the best experience I've ever had in my life. Yeah. I mean, it was so cool. My yeah. anxiety just washed away yeah. and, and it wasn't like I, um, the show came naturally. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, all the prep and the work and the hours that we put into it, we didn't know what what was going to happen on that Saturday night. Mm -hmm. My dad was exhausted. He had put in, I mean, hundreds of hours of work in, you know, the weeks coming up to this. And I was nervous that we would forget or blatantly, you know, mess something up. And I'm not kidding you, the show just... It went off without a hitch, didn't it? And it, Uh it just perfectly went through i mean it was just it it did it itself everything that came out of me it's almost like it just happened like you know Uh um i i so there was no anxiety it was crazy you know for someone who is always anxious and um so so um i'm always interested in asking people this because like we you know like uh few weeks ago we had the goalie on for the hockey team yes, and stuff and yeah. i was just you know trying to trying to 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 see what people do but like you know sort of the like the routine sure. that you know maybe be you know 
10 minutes before showtime, like, are you talking to people? Are you, you know, drinking some tea or, you know, or, or are you more kind of off in your own uh, space with headphones on and kind of just thinking about visualizing the show going through or what, yeah. what do you do? So it's kind of a little bit of everything. I think that I am the type of person, um, I need a little bit of alone time to gather my own thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'll typically walk away from everyone quietly and just um, do a little bit of vocal warming up and yeah. making sure that I'm, you know, feeling good doing whatever I need to do. Then I'll kind of go back, chat with the band a little bit. Um, and especially like a show like that, I prayed, I prayed mm -hmm. and I prayed and then mm -hmm. I got the band together and we all prayed and, um, you know, God works great magic and mm -hmm. he just, did his thing yeah. and that's pretty much what I do as I just yeah. and and we really try to have a, a, a group prayer before because we yeah. yeah we've noticed that when we not to get all into this but when yeah. we put ourselves and our hearts up to God like yeah. he just walks us through it all and and that's kind of a huge um huge thing with the guys that, that are in my band with me is we're all um on the same page as far as that goes. So, you're, you know, so Christian faith is really yeah, important to you. Yeah. That's yeah. really great. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, I attribute like a, being alive to God and stuff. So yeah. everything that he does with I think music. If we, if, I think if people really thought about it, we would all believe that, he, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, I, yeah, yeah, definitely in that uh -huh. aspect too. But um, yeah. yeah, so many different things. So That's amazing, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. so I say a good prayer and mm -hmm. I just set the rest to him and usually it just goes off or he – Yeah. And, and – you know, it mm -hmm. works. Because so. all, yeah, I mean, all things come from yeah. God and all of the gifts and abilities that we have, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, and then it also gives you confidence too. Yeah, and it? I, I think that, um, you know, uh, when you, when you are a little bit anxious, I think that that is almost a, a you need to take a step back and remember, mm -hmm. like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And, and just always remember to put it back into God's hands and he just does his thing. Yep. Like, it's kind of crazy. I, I, I don't even know how to explain it. Like he just makes things work. <laughs> he does. And it's all good. Yeah. So, um, what's, what is the feeling like when sort of like you're kind of in the middle of the show and you know, like I, I've heard it said sometimes that people just sort of like forget that the audience is there in certain times of the show and, other times they really feed off of the energy yeah. of the crowd. But like, do you ever, while you're in the middle of a song or something and you're you're at a show like that, just think to yourself like, wow, I can't believe that I'm doing this. And then, you know. Oh, or, totally. Yeah. And like, what, are, what are some of the thoughts that are going through your head when you're performing? You know, it's crazy. Or do because... you ever think of like, oh, I forgot. Maybe I left the light mm -hmm. on or, you know. <laughs> Did I unplug my straightener? Yeah. That is a huge yeah. question that runs through my head. Um, no, I think a lot of the time I... I'm blown away that um, people actually will come and like just watch me blabber mm. and scream on stage. That's kind of how I like to say it because it's like yeah. I'm just here like making noise. You yeah. know, you guys are enjoying just this. Well, it's music. Yeah, no, definitely. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, it's crazy to me that people actually like enjoy what I do because mm. I enjoy it and I know my dad enjoys it. So. Mm. It's just crazy that other people also, you know, so sometimes I look out and I'm just going like, holy smokes, like, this is so cool that I have a packed bar and they're singing every word to the song with mm -hmm. me, or I have a packed house at the Armory. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was, a that was, the Armory show was like the most special um, show I've done because it was, it was totally different. So like that one, I was looking out and going, holy smokes, like, yeah. I can't <laughs> believe that you know this paid off the marketing my stepmom mm -hmm. busted her butt and marketed candy. me yeah, yeah. candy uh -huh. she she did the most and i uh -huh. appreciate it because yeah. i expected like 50 100 people there and there was over 200 yeah. so it was it was really exciting and yeah, yeah i guess i look out and i just i kind of think like holy smokes like this is it's really cool that people actually care to listen you know and the focus was on original material yeah too. yeah yeah although I, I i do have to um i didn't want to overlook this that you did sing i think at least one cover um by an artist who i who i love uh bob dylan and oh yes you, yeah, and you you had to do it and uh 
I thought it was really cool um, that you sang a Dylan song. I thought it was appropriate. Yeah. Um, you know, because, of course, he's coming back from, from way back in, in Hibbing. If you can, yeah. you know, that Bob Dylan came from Hibbing and all that. I know he doesn't necessarily identify as being a Minnesotan, but... <laughs> I think that we claim Bob. I don't know if Bob claims us necessarily, I, you, you know, but... you said it. You said it well. I think you said it very well. Um you know, for me, I there's nothing I like more than kind of driving around like on road trips, going around up north and like listening to Bob Dylan. Yeah, and it, he is so special too. I mean, I I take a lot of inspiration from his his wackiness in a way. Yeah. You know, the way that he writes and 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 um, how he can he can get a message across so clear yeah. with with kind of a funny tune, you know, right. or like not all of them are funny. Don't let me say well, it that way. Well, some of his but... lyrics are a little strange, but but they're but they're serious too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you know, I I Bob Dylan is. I think that everyone in the world. I mean, he's yeah. a Nobel Peace Prize winner. I think that everyone can yeah. agree, but he. He's a special guy in music, and and I think that it's very important yeah. to tribute, um, or not tribute, yeah. but because he's alive. I don't know how that works, yeah. right? Like, well, you're honoring his, him. Yeah, yeah. honor yeah. honor the uh-huh. music that is great, and the, yeah. and half the reason we have all the music that we have today. I mean, yeah. you know, um, Bob Dylan was friends with Johnny Cash, who well, was he fr- just so I mean, it inspirational, it all, generational, yeah. you know, like you know, I mean, like there's there's. Very few people that come come across. I, you know. Yeah, I have a song that um, I renamed for the simple fact of it was a little bit hard to explain all the time, but I called it um, Dylan Jennings because it was written in Bob Dylan's like style of randomness, mm-hmm. kind of, mm-hmm. but with like a Waylon Jennings. Um, oh yeah countrified beat to it uh-huh, so uh-huh. um i like to call it that but yeah we ended up calling it exile which oh. is it's one of my favorite <laughs> songs that's going to be on the album so yeah but you know i think that it, you do pull from so many different artists when you're writing yep. and mm-hmm. everything so yeah, yeah I and i just Bob. i just thought it was cool that he was one of them because he's also one of my favorites oh too. my gosh that is yeah that is cool um so i want to get into your songwriting but um so there were a couple of songs that i that i paid particular attention to because i listened to them again later because you you sent the uh your tiktok okay link yeah, and all that yeah. and so uh one of them was old guitar which oh, is yeah. that was one that you wrote yep 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 and um, so I was listening to that one again. I think you did perform that one mm-hmm. also. And oh, actually, I think the video that you have posted on TikTok is, is of that there. performance. Yep, yep. Yeah. So I was listening to that and it kind of gave me that, um, what is that guy's name who uh, sang the, Oliver, Oliver or something? Anthony. Yes. Yep, yes. I, I, I got that, 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 that vibe uh, from that song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I totally like wrote it similarly off of that. I had had like this idea of... And I, I don't know if we're going to get into it in a little bit, but my songwriting process is so weird and random. Like, yeah. I will just randomly have... Why don't you just, just say sure. what it is? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so um, I would say 90% of the music I write is in my shower. I have waterproof notepads and a waterproof pencil, and I go to town in the shower. You actually write? In, <laughs> yes, like, like... I write full songs. <laughs> and, and my showers are not short by any uh, means, you know, not because I'm... But just because yeah. I, if I get into a, that mode of... Wa- were you writing on paper and pencil? Yeah, waterproof, a waterproof pad. You can get them on... I never um, even heard of it. Okay. Yeah, oh, waterproof sorry. notepads. Look them up on Amazon. Right. I okay. think they're useful for anyone yeah. because uh-huh. how many people think of random things in the shower, yeah. you have nowhere to write it, you know? Or like, you're just going to try to remember it forever. <laughs> well, the song lyrics, they're popping in, in my out of my head all the time. But for some reason, yeah. you know, the shower is where I'm like exploding. My uh-huh. thoughts just come to life. And I right. guess I just allow myself to think a little bit. Yeah. So I write. So you got it right there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But um, sometimes it, it'll be just one line and I'm going, how am I supposed to incorporate this into a song? Because I have like mm-hmm. so many different things in my head. So old guitar, though, I wrote, um, I'll stick with my dad in this old guitar. Yeah. And I didn't have anything else because, you know, at the end of the day, my dad is my best friend, my dad, Mm -hmm. my bandmate, you know, the guy that drives me to do everything. The reason that I'm doing music or, Mm -hmm. you know, probably in Park Rapids still, to be honest, is is my dad because he's he's my whole life. But um, 
so I'll just stick with my dad. And slowly, after that Oliver Anthony song, I, I just connected with it a lot. And I was like, you know, I'm going to write my own piece of mm-hmm. yeah what I, you know, wish. I, you and know, a lot of things were, you know, the 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 kind of the state of things now yeah and just yeah. kind of expressing your frustration yeah and I think a lot of people you know younger people are are feeling the same way that you're feeling and it I think you're going to connect with them with that song definitely I think yeah. that's I think that's just a really cool song too and mm-hmm. originally actually now that I'm thinking it was I'll stick with my dad but then I told my dad I said are people going to resonate with that or should I say I'll just stick with my man and this old guitar you know my boyfriend and this old guitar yeah. and and so it bounced back and forth and then it kind of went back to my dad because that's that's yeah. the truth like no matter what well, he's always going to be there yeah, right yeah exactly <laughs> and 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 yeah so no um you there was another song that was I think you said it was about a boyfriend or something like that seasons is that yeah yeah, yeah. okay so there so you did actually I, write yes, a, a, a love a song a couple right? love songs yeah. for him I feel uh-huh. bad because most of my songs are about you know yeah. depression and and being not mentally okay uh-huh. and then I'm like well you know I do love you just so you know yeah. <laughs> so that seasons was written like a week and a half maybe two weeks before mm-hmm. the show I mean. I, I was having all of, I I had actually written it, but I guess it got kind of put together in mm-hmm. the set, like just so shortly before. Um, I was worried I wasn't going to remember the words because I, I hadn't yeah. practiced it like Did the you, rest. Do you have any kind of like, uh, oh, you know, like uh, not um, teleprompters, but, you know, cue, well, cue cards or anything like that? I did, and, yeah. and <laughs> they got kind of scattered all over the floor and ended up being more of a pain in the butt uh, than actually than actually being useful. And we have an iPad stand that we usually use for um, gigs to have, you know, the sound and the lyrics and stuff. Well, we wanted to have it iPad free on stage, Mm -hmm. but I had the iPad holder just to have it as a backup, forgot to put the iPad into it. So then we had an iPad and papers scattered Mm -hmm. all over the floor. (laughs) So it kind of ended up being, but it was our first time ever running through the show. So yeah. You know, we learned so much that night and it still went off without a hitch. I mean, did the, you have the, any problems remembering lyrics or anything? Yeah, like there was that? a few times was where there? but here's the but thing, nobody could it's notice my it. own music. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, nobody knew that that I mixed up the verses or anything. So it worked yep. out slick. Yep. My dad and I kind of we would look at each other like, "Oh, that was the wrong word." You yeah, know? but only but, you knew. Oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so. Do you play any instruments? Um, no. Yeah. I I really I've tried. Uh-huh. Um I'm not coordinated and I don't have patience really yeah. and I don't have the best memory. Uh-huh. I can play a little guitar. Can I can you? do yeah. like very, very minimal bass guitar. Yeah. Um, I like to say I can play the harmonica um, and sometimes I can if I do it in short doses. <laughs> but sometimes then I just, yeah, but yeah. Um, that's my goal. I really, really want to um, get more involved in being able to write my own songs. What about keyboard? Have you ever no. have you ever sat down well, at a keyboard and kind of plunk things out? Or? Oh, man. Back in high school, I gave Luann Durkheising a run for money trying to take <laughs> piano lessons. Uh-huh. But um, <laughs> nope, yeah. nope. I, I would like to yeah. take some lessons. I think that I need to try someone other than my dad because we are so alike that That's our... That's probably tough. You know, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah so... Um, but yeah. you know, I don't think Michael Jackson ever played any instruments either. Did you ever, did you hear anything about how his how he wrote songs? No. He had like a, um, I think it was just like a like an audio recorder, and he would just kind of like you know what I'm talking about. I want to do that because yeah. it's the most random times that you have these brilliant song he, ideas he and would, they're gone. Do stuff like okay, here's how the guitar is gonna go. Like duh, duh, duh. you know, I'm not gonna try yeah. to imitate it because I'll look foolish. But you know, it's but then he's and here's how the bass goes, and then bop bop bop. You know, like. So he he'd have the whole song like all the instrumentation uh vocalized. Oh, that is so cool. And See, then, mm-hmm. that's how I um get it over to my dad. I'll say yeah. exactly that or yeah. like if the drummer is drumming one way I'll say, "Okay, I'm actually going for like a bunch to bump a dunch." You know, yeah. I have to I have to verbalize yep. it, but I don't know the correct terminology or I anything. I think a lot of so. people do it that way though. It, and it works. Yeah. yeah. Um, not always. Do you read music or anything? Yeah, I can okay. read music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that helps and um, I I'm well versed in the guitar world just being around my dad all the time. Yeah. But I was actually just chatting with um, 
a friend of mine and I realized I know nothing but mm-hmm. a lot at the same time, if that makes sense. It does. Yeah. So Well, I knowing, lot- knowing that you know nothing is knowing a lot. Well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's actually, that's, that's a that good deep? model to yeah. live by. Yeah. Um, well, how do you come up with melodies? Like, do, do those just kind of occur to you? Like, in you know shower dreaming yep. driving like what's it's so weird so like i'll have that one line in my head i'll just stick with my dad mm-hmm. and this whole guitar and that's how that's all of a sudden i'm like okay so that's the progression flow uh-huh. of the sound that i want is like yeah. um it just writes itself in, in my head if that yeah. makes sense like uh-huh. um and sometimes which i want to tell you something which you probably already know but there is no like original sound anymore Mm -hmm. every 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 something is derivative yes exactly so um you know when i say that i listen to a song there's nothing new under the sun yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. exactly Mm -hmm. gosh you're good (laughs) well Um, i didn't say that but i'm not going to take credit for that but yeah (laughs) well you can today i wouldn't have known that was from the book of ecclesiastes actually (laughs) okay i'm learning so much thank you yeah um but now I don't remember where I was at. But um, that, that you were saying that 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 new, there are no such such oh, things yeah, as new sounds. Yeah. And, yeah. So like kind of with that, how I um, heard, you know, Oliver Anthony, and I resonated with what he was saying, and kind of yeah. wrote my own basis version of that song in a way, but it's mm-hmm. different. If mm-hmm. that makes sense, you know. Um, so there. So sometimes I'll hear a Zach Bryan song, and I'll go, Oh, I feel like that's a neat like start to a melody Mm -hmm. how can my dad change that yeah so that way it's using because i might be able to write a song to exactly that but we need to make it our own you know so that's something that well you play in a style yeah you know i mean that's that's uh that definitely makes sense yeah i i I mean there's there are there's limited numbers of styles and yeah i mean there's there's a reason why in like the 70s like a lot of the bands kind of sounded the same is because somebody comes in and they're they they you know make an impact on the industry yeah. and then or like you know like in the 60s and stuff with the beatles there are a lot of bands that that you know Tried, ended up getting yeah. that sound yeah. or the stones yeah. and so they're influential and of course there's going to be i mean but that that's just that's not just music that's in the history of art too yeah definitely you know you look back at like the impressionists and and there were there were people like you know people painters that were influential in a certain style of painting and then there were others that that you know yeah. came, came right along and enhanced it and added that to is such the... a good way to look at it but yeah, yeah so you know it's kind of interesting just to finish up with that melody thing mm-hmm. because they kind of the lyrics and the melody in my head fall into one category mm-hmm. but sometimes we have to tweak it and change yeah. it which you know to make it your own melody. So but. you never come up with them um, sort of in a vacuum, like you don't come up with like a, a solo, like a melody without any words, but also just words without a melody? Well, or do they always go together for you? Um, so the only time I kind of write to like a different melody than what just goes naturally with the lyrics that flow through my head, if that makes sense, mm-hmm. is when my dad writes a guitar part. And then he goes, I really want you to put lyrics to this. Yeah. So then I have so then to work then, then twice he gets as hard, the, He though. gets part of the credit, right? Yeah, the, definitely. Okay. <laughs> well, he should. Yeah, yeah. We, we probably need to work through all well, that. Well, just make logistics. sure that you guys get that straightened out before your album starts selling like hotcakes because, you know. Uh, you know, but... that's a really good point. That 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 kind of could bring me into another story of um, I uh-huh. was featured on a, on, on a guy's album and one of my own original – songs that um, I had written was on this album and and I have no credit there's nothing no writing credit no writing credit I sang the song um my name's not on you the, should at least get recording credit definitely yeah, you know yeah. and now we don't chat we don't talk at all mm, so that's disappointing. you know yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so it is kind of nice to think about the fact that I do need to make sure my dad is credited because I don't want the same thing to happen mm-hmm. to him that happened to me even though it would be quite a bit different with yeah with me than well it's interesting because like and and you can come up with different arrangements like if you ever look back i you know like you think of like the greatest you know well one of the greatest songwriting pairs that's ever existed lennon mccartney they would always credit each other with with the songs like it would always be lennon and mccartney regardless of actually who wrote the song yeah. like so for instance like the song yesterday which everybody sure. knows right yeah written by paul mccartney 
But if you look at the at the album, you know, and the credit that's on there, yeah. it, it always says Lennon and McCartney. So yeah. Lennon gets credit for it, too. So it's something that you can manipulate in some way. And I think my dad will have when this because we're not even to the point where we have to get into the logistics of all, no, all of that. No. But I think that he needs to be as much on there because mm-hmm. he's done this entire process with yeah. me, you know? Like, so, so let's talk about that a little bit. So your band now is your, is it your brother and then your dad or who, or um, who, who, who's in your band? Let's yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. So originally it was my two brothers and my dad had a band. Mm-hmm. Um, I moved back to town from the twin cities area and yeah. I kind of joined in. And so that was originally the raccoon antlers. And then when I joined in, it was Lydia Rose and the Raccoon Antlers. Uh Then they, um, you know, they were teenagers. They didn't want to be playing bar bands, you know, bar gigs every weekend. They wanted to go and play sports and and be teenagers. So they are taking a break from music, which left me with just my dad and I. So we obviously couldn't be Lydia Rose and the RA boys. Mm -hmm. So we totally pivoted and went to an acoustic duo together. Okay. And that's where Two Towns Down came from. Shout out to Revel Brewing because that was the first um, duo show that we did mm-hmm. as Two Towns Down, which grew into what we have today. Yeah. Um, and for a long time, it was just the two of us. Yep. Then my dad played an, in a church band with a guy named Kyle. Mm-hmm. And he said, hey, I'm going to have Kyle come and play at play at a gig that it was just my dad playing. Is he the bass player then? Yep. Yep. Okay. And so lo and behold, Mm -hmm. I meet Kyle, the bass player. Yeah. Still his name in my phone is Kyle, the bass player. Uh Uh-huh. And he just fit, he fit with us so well. I mean, his, um, his positivity, um, his style, you know, the way that it just works. He works very well with us. And Mm -hmm. so we became a trio. Yeah. And, um. Then this winter, my my brother actually played with us at the Armory yeah. on drums. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I think that we're going to get him back for some of our bigger shows. Yeah. Um, the only reason my other brother wasn't there is because he had a hockey tournament uh, um, that weekend. Okay. So and and I'm I think that he needs to be pursuing sports while he's in high school, anyways. Sure. So I'm yeah, like, buddy, yeah, yeah. you need to go do that. Yeah. And is he at Park Rapids then? Or? Yep, yep. He oh. was a Bantam this year. Oh, Bantam. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So yeah. yeah. Well, we follow the Park Rapids hockey team around here, so I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, they won their first game that Saturday night. So I said, you know what? All of us had a big win tonight, buddy, mm-hmm. and he was excited. So good. Yeah. Um. So a couple other, I think, the, of those sort of like, I don't want to call them buzzwords, but words that um, come to mind when I think of somebody who's doing what you're doing. Um, commitment. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So like, what's your, what is your time commitment to this stuff? I mean, I, you mentioned that you, that you work on, you have a day job too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I own a cleaning business. That's uh-huh. my, you know, nine to five, my bill, play, my bill yep. payer. Yep. Um, but my dad and I spend, I mean, before the show, we were spending seven nights a week. It was yeah. an, an all day Saturday, Sunday type of thing. Yeah. So it 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 is time consuming. It's a commitment. Yeah. And, and I actually credit more than my dad and I, my, my stepmom and my boyfriend, because mm-hmm. they're the ones who are truly giving up their time um, with, with me and my dad yeah. to, so we can make this happen, you sure. know? So I always like to credit them because I, I could be in the studio every day of the week with my dad and I uh-huh. think he could be the same way. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> not even, it's not hard, you know, it's not, yeah. it's not like it's a labor of love. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. We love doing this. We love recording and we love so it doesn't feel like a chore to you really no you know? sometimes. Yeah. I mean, everybody, you know, uh-huh. there'll, there'll be times where, I, yeah, I, wish I maybe would have, um, no, not really, honestly. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like, when have I even, you uh-huh. know, but I guess I was just a little sick last week. So yeah. I was a little burnt out then. But mm-hmm. other than that, I would spend all my free time. I wish that I didn't have to work a nine to five, you know, yeah. hopefully eventually that's kind of the goal. Mm-hmm. I think every musician's goal is to not have to quit your day, day job. Yeah, yeah. work uh-huh. a day job. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But um, yeah. yeah. Desire. What about that? I yeah. mean, like, what are your, what are your dreams? I, I truthfully, I want to play, you know, a sold out stadium mm-hmm. and I want people to hear my music and mm-hmm. love it. And 
I don't really care about being rich or what or famous necessarily, but I want to, I want to like change people's lives Mm -hmm. with music, how my life has been changed with music. I want to get people through those low spots or celebrate those high highs. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that it's really important to motivate, move and, um, help people you know yeah. music is medicine mm-hmm. it's it's a true saying I think so. and mm-hmm. that's another reminder before a show when i'm nervous i remind myself that i'm giving them a heavy dose of medicine you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. when i'm going out to play um because you never know what what impact you're going to have you, you never you know what someone's the right going through song at the right moment exactly could, yep. mm-hmm. you know there uh, my dad and i sing a song we we used to not get along by any means. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I was a teenager and a lot of teenagers can be yeah, rebellious. Absolutely. Yeah. And I and I definitely <laughs> Were you one of those? No, I don't believe no. it. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was an angelic uh-huh. child. No. Uh-huh. Um so for for years we we didn't speak and so when we got came back together in each other's lives we wrote a song about that. And that song has hit home with a lot of people who don't have great relationships with other family members. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, one of those moments. What's that song called? That's called Our Song. Mm-hmm. It's really... And then um, there's another one. One second here. Mm-hmm. There's another song that um, I didn't play out, and I'm just going to release it on my album. And it's called Johnny. And um, my brother that was drumming for us got into it me and him got into it pretty bad, which we never argue. I'm eight years older than him. So I'm basically like, you know, a sister mom. (laughs) So we don't argue (laughs) like that. Uh So it kind of caused the whole family to be up in arms and have some issues. So um, I've showed a few people that song and it really resonates with not just siblings. I mean, that one is, I can't wait to hear people's reactions to that one um, because of how moving it is. So back to it though. I think that I want to move people with my music and Mm -hmm. that's my biggest desire is to be able to look out and, you know, Mm -hmm. watch people sing in my songs Mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. Like I do when I go to their concerts, you Mm -hmm. know, when I go to people's concerts, I'm, I'm dreaming of Mm -hmm. being them Mm -hmm. essentially. When did you first realize that you had a talent for singing? Oh my gosh. I didn't realize it. My dad did. I, I refuse to sing publicly. I was in choir in high school and ask anyone who was in choir with me. Nobody thought I would be where I am today. I mean, I did not, I was, I was always a goofy class clown, Mm -hmm. you know, messing around, making Mrs. D mad, (laughs) you know, and, um, then one day in 2019, my dad and my brothers were playing at Wolf Lake, um, the -hmm. harvest days or whatever. Mm -hmm. My dad was struggling vocally. He had a cold or something. I just decided to hop on stage and sing Wagon Wheel was the first song. So that's I'd really sang. how it came about that you just got on I stage just and started hopped singing? On, I, I, and I thought to myself, I can't watch him flounder like this because he was, you know, he was sick, so he wasn't able to sing. So um, it started. Did, is I there didn't a even, video of that? <laughs> I, I think that my stepmom or yeah. um, my Aunt Julie may have. Photos you or gotta put that, that on your TikTok or something. That yeah. would be so cool. <laughs> I I think it is <laughs> like crazy. the first time you tried singing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I wasn't. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I've progressed a lot um, since 2019. Have you taken any kind of vocal no, coaching or I'm, anything? Like and that? I think that I need to as well because mm-hmm. that goes in with um, taking care of your vocals. Yeah. Is is learning exactly what to do and not to do. Um, when I was looking at um, getting into vocal lessons, COVID was just hot and heavy. Yeah. And then I just haven't looked into it since. And I really mm-hmm. need to because it's something that would benefit me yeah. over guitar lessons. Ultimately, I should probably prioritize. Maybe. <laughs> but um, but I would say like, like uh, yeah, I mean, you could take vocal lessons, but, you know, Probably the bet your best tool for songwriting would be a piano rather than a yeah, guitar, just because yeah, it's totally. a little easier to visualize it, and you're sitting down and you can kind of organize your thoughts and yeah. stuff like that. And guitar is hard because, well, as I'm sure as you know from being around guitarists and stuff like that, but in order to really be able to play it, play it um, well with any sort of like um, agility or 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 speed, or even just to get the sound out that you want, you really have to play a lot to develop those calluses on your yeah. fingers. And um, that itself is a, is a big time commitment. 
Whereas like with the piano, yeah, I mean, it's a hard instrument. I mean, I, I play the piano okay. and um, it's it's not an easy instrument to play. It's not an easy, it's definitely not an easy instrument to master. It's one sure. of the most difficult yeah. ones. But I think it's one of the one of the easier ones to to kind of just take up to use for the purpose of like what you're doing. Yeah. You know, playing a melody on uh, with the right hand, you know, maybe filling in some chords with the left, but without the expectation that you're going to be performing. Yeah. But and all, also without the the you know the physical barrier to entry of actually having to develop the finger strength and calluses that it needs to you know, you'd need to play the guitar yeah and I, then you can just I, get a little cheap keyboard and you know i'm sure you I mean, you probably have one right? i do yeah but that's that's such a good way to look at it you know yeah. um and you know when you think of a lot of singer songwriters they are able to at least plink on a mm-hmm. keyboard and you know get what they're thinking out it's a lot easier to experiment with sounds and melodies on a piano than it would be with a guitar just because like you're you can't visual like it's not you can't just see the keys in front of you like when you're playing the guitar you see strings and you know uh you know put you know depressing certain you know parts of the of the you know the fretboard and yeah. all that stuff to get a different sound but with the keys you can actually see something press it and you know that a, so- a sound's going to come out you hit the next button you hit the next key and this you know you you kind of have an expectation of what yeah. that's going to sound like probably be better for me with the lack of patience <laughs> i seem to have with well Dari, you're so you know? busy i mean it sounds like you're you know you're working you're doing yeah. your cleaning business and then you're singing and you're songwriting and if you're trying to add in another thing you know, yeah. on top of uh, of all the other, you know, whatever else you your uh, you know family and relationships, it just seems like it might be a little bit more efficient. But. Sometimes it just I don't even understand how I get everything done. But actually, this fall when I was trying to learn guitar, I was able to take twenty minutes a day. So if, if I was able to, I know that I should be able to for piano. So I'm gonna yeah. get on that because that's and twenty good... minutes on piano a day might get you further than twenty minutes on guitar. Truly, but I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying that's from my personal advice. I when I I learned how to play the guitar when I was in college, but that's because okay. I had an acoustic guitar, and I had nothing better to do than just kind of sit in my dorm room sure. all day and 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 really get those calluses built up. But anyway, um. So, um, uh, you, uh, you know, you talk about time and time management and everything like that. Are you able to sleep at night? Do you get enough good sleep? One thing about me is I have to get, I have to get my eight hours. Like I am, um. I wanted to make sure that you knew that because, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I am a very, I need my routine. Yeah. Um, I'm the type of person 930 is when I like to be like in bed. Yeah. Doesn't always happen. Right. But this is what I like, you know. Yeah. And I get up at six. Um. Pretty much, so you're getting eight hours. Yeah. Yeah. But I super important have to get enough sleep, otherwise I am. Mm -hmm so crabby and I'm short tempered and you know Mm -hmm. so my sleep is one of the things that I never lose that prioritize never lose that always hold on to that because it'll it'll benefit you in every in every way so um okay so let's let's talk about your like where people can find you online yeah so I just started a tiktok um yep Figuring kind of out how the algorithm of that works. Um, Because it's kind of different. I have a personal TikTok and then I have a band TikTok, you know, so you're going for different people in the mix of that. Um, Our Facebook is a really good place. So what's, before we get off of that, what the TikToks that you have, what are they? Oh yeah, so most of them are, I... I mean, like, what's the name? Like if you were, yeah, they were going to search it up. yeah. Yeah. It's called Lydia Rose Band. Lydia Rose Band, yep. all one word? Yep, all one word, okay. and it should pop up. I think that it's a picture of me playing playing a guitar. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, and then is there, and then you have another one that's like more of like an influencer one? or, yeah. or Okay, what's that one called? <laughs> that or are you not wanting to share that one? <laughs> no, I don't that care. One's, <laughs> that one's just my first and last name. Okay. Anyone can uh-huh. find it, but uh-huh. it sure is cringy. So. Okay, all right, all right. Well, but, then we'll leave that one alone. But yeah, yeah. but you heard it, actually. You heard yeah. her say what it was. <laughs> yeah. So now you want to go to that one, right? But yeah. um, and then Facebook. Yep, um, our Facebook band page. Um, that's the Lydia Rose Band. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So um, that's the main place that you can find pretty much everything. My stepmom runs that page, okay. and she does a really good job of uh-huh. keeping everything up to date. Our uh, future events. You know, Instagram at all or? Yeah, we do use Instagram. I need to be better. I'm actually not yeah. a big social media person. Um, what? I used to be a uh-huh. lot, a lot <laughs> more into social media, but uh-huh. 
it's fallen to the wayside. So I got to yeah. get a little bit more into actively posting. Yeah. Um, yeah. But well, and yeah. then um, do you? So you you just use Facebook as kind of your primary website. You don't have another like standalone website or anything. We like that are too? working on that. Okay. So we will have that um, mm-hmm. really soon. That's yep. another thing. My stepmom. If I didn't have her, I wouldn't have marketing at all. So I'm really really appreciative oh, yeah. that <laughs> yeah. I have her uh-huh. and all she does. So she's working on a full website. Um, we just got our videography back yesterday from the Armory show. So we're going to be putting yeah. together. You know some bigger promo packs and, oh that's great yeah and things of that nature so facebook is definitely the place to find our upcoming shows tiktok would be the place i would say for like the little comedy pieces and yeah. then like um actual clips of our songs and and the raw yeah i was watching your songs on tiktok this morning too because i you had them i think you had two full songs posted on yeah yeah, yeah. 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 and it's from raw. the armory show yep. yeah it's totally like mm-hmm. um either in my dad's studio or um, from the Armory show, or just a little funny ha-ha mm-hmm. ones that are supposed to get you views, as they say, or whatever. But Yeah, like the clickbait or yeah, whatever yeah. those are. Okay. Um, do you have any shows? like So um, this, well, let me just ask you, what what big shows do you have come up, coming sure. up or what any kind of shows come, that you have coming up? Um, we don't have much big coming up until the summer starts just yeah. because I am recording like crazy right now. Sure. I mean, there's 17 songs on this first album. That's Everflow? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so, and another thing with the recording, and I really like to emphasize this, my dad is learning everything from square one. So I he's mean, doing like, all the mixing and yeah, all that? Okay. So, it's definitely taking longer than yeah. you know someone who's professionally doing this. So you guys are focusing on recording now. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's time consuming. So we um, took some time off of active shows. Yeah. You know, playing out. We still are playing out here and there, like yeah. Revel Brewing on the thirtieth, um, which will be our original show. Yep. Um, thirtieth uh, of March. Yep. Stripped down version of okay. our original. Well, this show, probably so. won't, won't be out by then, but yeah. Um, oh, that's yeah. okay. <laughs> well, it, it was yeah. a great show. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't it a great show on the thirtieth? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, no, yeah. but. Uh, June 29th, um, yeah. Paul Bunyan Days in Akeley. That's uh-huh. going to be a really big one for us. We're okay. doing the main stage. Um, other than that... Are you going to play Musky Days at all? Or? I don't know if we're yeah. playing there this year. Um, I think we might be booked for some private event. Oh, um, cause, oh so you do that? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. We are booked in, like crazy for private shows this uh-huh. summer, uh-huh. Um, which is cool. And yeah. it's kind of really... Uh, you, it's a good way to like blow up yeah. within like different um people that wouldn't you know find me any other way than having to go to mm-hmm. joe blow's party yeah seeing us and then they book us for their summer party next yeah yeah year, yeah. So. yeah um yeah so that's awesome we play we're playing all the way out in montana this summer and really yeah so we'll be all all over kind of but oh that's great so Next. is it is it a, is it going to be like an official tour or uh, no, <laughs> yeah. no it's a wedding we're playing okay but, um, yeah um, so the album is going to consist of how many songs? There should be 17 on 17. there. 17. That's yeah. a full length album. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we already mentioned the title is Everflow. Yep. And, um, so, and, and obviously this, a lot of this stuff could still be in the work. So you, the answer to this question could be, I don't know, but my, but the question I was going to ask is that how is it going to be distributed? Oh, sure. So probably on every platform, um, mm-hmm. going through distro kid is mostly what's what, that um so they distribute it for you you essentially you know s- i don't know exactly because i haven't done it yet but you distro essentially kit i don't know if it's with a t or a d, d. to be okay. honest okay. so yeah, i yeah, kind of yeah. i kind of more yeah it. i, I so yeah, 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 yeah i know i, didn't I called like you on wrong. it I, yeah, yeah uh-huh. um but <laughs> so you essentially upload it to there i think you have to pay a flat fee and then yeah. they distribute it across okay. every platform yeah. Um, and they deal with the monetization. I was going to um, say, how do you how do you continue to have control over it if you're going through a third party like that? Yeah. I don't know exactly. Yeah. Other people will answer that question. I wish I question. could tell you, but yeah. I wasn't involved you're, that's in the last, not your end in of the the last project <laughs> that I was on either. I didn't get any any yeah. notice for that. But yeah, so I don't know exactly how okay. it works. But it, it, so it'll be streaming main, mainly, right? I mean, are you going to print any physical I copies so. of it? I think so. I think just because that's so old school and cool, you yeah. know? And mm-hmm. I, um, from the album that I was on, I have that 
hard disc, whether yeah. or not my car has a CD player, right. I still have it. Doesn't it. Matter. Yeah. My kids will think that's cool one day, and right. maybe they'll think it's a frisbee. I don't know. Who knows? So yeah. you know, I think that we will. But yeah, mostly streaming. Um, I'm hoping to do a few music videos. Mm-hmm. So if there's any videographers in the area, uh, let me introduce you to Caleb yeah. Hahn. Uh, <laughs> Caleb Hahn here is a young videographer with uh, with an excellent uh, skill set. He's yeah. got a He's got a, a professional, uh, cut rig. professional rig, and he's very easy to work with. So I, I recommend Caleb Hahn, and um, his business is Caleb Hahn Videography, and it can be found on Facebook. Oh, good deal. Yes. See, I, I yeah. knew that there had to uh-huh. be someone around here. <laughs> um, so um, we're, we're kind of drawing to the end here. I, I, I want to ask you about Elvis because I also saw one of your videos that you love Elvis, which is kind I of an interesting so thing for somebody. I love Elvis. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. like I have a shrine. Um, a shrine I, to Elvis, Elvis I, Presley. Uh-huh. I, I live in a, um, a house that's maybe mm-hmm. like two or three of these rooms, so yeah. I don't have it currently up, but I have three totes worth of memorabilia to Elvis Presley. Of Elvis. What do you like about Elvis? You know, I actually just love his music, to be uh-huh. honest. Um, yeah. He wasn't, like, the best guy, to believe it or not. Like, in, I don't believe yeah, it for a minute. But, um, no. he, you know, he had <laughs> yeah. his problems. So sure. I don't yeah, necessarily, like, don't love we, yeah. who he was. But mm-hmm. I, I love his music. I think that Young Elvis was a hunk of hunk of. Mm-hmm. Okay. Love, yeah. You know? Uh-huh. Um, and I, I just uh, – kind of how the like, obsession started was um, – one of my ex-boyfriend's mom got me, like, half of the first tote that I had was unopened movies that he had been in, you know, when he was... Unopened in. Elvis movies. Yeah, they're still Here in... Here you go, lady. Here's a gift. There's a bunch of unopened yeah, Elvis movies. Yeah, and, like, I have records, <laughs> and, like, uh-huh. she hit a gold mine at some... That's really cool. Yeah, and so... That's a thoughtful gift. Super thoughtful, yeah. because I loved him, but then mm-hmm. I started collecting items, so, yeah. like, the guitar in that studio... Um, video that you saw on TikTok about Elvis or whatever he, I got from my grandpa for Christmas. So like uh, mm-hmm. then it starts just kind of flowing in cuz You ever been to Graceland? No, but my mom everyone I know has except me. Mm-hmm. So I'm like I got to next time I'm in Tennessee, I got to Uh-huh. Yeah. Take a trip. Um let me just close by asking you what advice would you give to young people? Oh, I think that's so like just young people in general, mm-hmm. yeah. like just yeah. The youth. The youth. Yeah. Don't try to grow up too fast. Um, enjoy being a kid and do kid stuff and pursue the things in life that are important to you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that my biggest piece of advice is just follow your own dreams. Um, don't be pushed into anything that you don't want to do. But also, if you want to jump out and, and try something like being a musician... By all means, do it. If you want to mm-hmm. be a painter, do it. Um, I think that it's really important that, that the youth doesn't just fall into the, you know, typical work my life away mantra that just mm-hmm. becomes such a, you know, normalized part of our of our society. It, I think it's important that they are kids and enjoy being young and, mm-hmm. and just make the memories while you can because eventually you're going to be old and have to work every day and it stinks. So just do whatever you want to do from personal experience. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to mention before we wrap things up? Um, let me just go over my quick, my quick, (laughs) my quick note from my PR lady Uh here. uh I do just want to give like a quick shout out to my band. Um, Kyle, you're awesome. My dad wouldn't mm-hmm. be here without you, man. Yeah. My brothers, John and Jack, I can't wait for you guys to get more into back into the music life, but also be young and do the young stuff. Uh, to Candy and yeah. all that she does, I mean, I I wouldn't be half of where I am, you yeah. know, without having what she does for me, mm-hmm. which is everything from styling me to oh. posting all my Facebook stuff because uh-huh. I'm terrible uh-huh. to everything. So I really appreciate that. Um, Dylan, thanks for putting up with me and how much mm-hmm. I am gone. I appreciate that. And yeah. I love you guys all. And thanks, Mom, for watching. Yeah. <laughs> well, Lydia, um, it's really been a lot of fun talking to you. And you've got that 
charisma, you've got the talent, you've got the voice, oh, thank you've you. got it all going for you. So now just go out there and be successful and Absolutely. keep us, you know. A, hey, hopefully next year I'm on this and I got all my tour dates for you guys. That's so. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll cut, then you, we'll have you on. And we can talk about your your tour yeah. and how successful that's been. Um, and you can find Lydia by going to the Lydia Rose Band on Facebook and other social media platforms that we have discussed. Yeah. So, <laughs> Lydia, thank you so much. Thank now, you. Go out there and have a great weekend. Woohoo! I'm excited. I got All taxes right. after this. So. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> Lydia Rose, thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>